Today we're responding to your comments and viewer mail on Muscle Car of the Week. We knew we'd be getting a lot of feedback on the amazing 3.4 mile 1967 Mustang featured in episode number 290 of Muscle Car of the Week. And a lot of people asked similar questions, like they saw the condition of the engine and the underhood area and suggested that maybe this car had more miles than three and a half because it showed a little bit of corrosion and some dust and dirt. Well, as we pointed out in that episode, these cars were not stored in ideal conditions. They were kept for many, many years in a brick facility on a gravelly black pitch surface. So there was airflow that came through, but this was not temperature or climate controlled and not humidity controlled. So if you imagine putting something kind of halfway between indoors and outdoors for 50 years, well, yeah, absolutely. Things can corrode under the hood. Another interesting comment we got was from the renowned Mustang restorer, Bob Perkins. And he currently owns two of the other super low mile Mustangs from that Bob Mercer collection. And Bob Perkins writes, hey, that's a great car. Bob Mercer showed me the collection in the early 90s, and I eventually ended up with the black 66 and 69 Mach 1 that were both shown in the article with your car. All the cars were untitled and never dealer prepped, and most had a few miles for minimal maintenance. The original batteries were with the cars when I picked up mine. The ultimate rare find was the Bob Mercer collection. Bob Perkins cars are featured on the Mustang 360 website. Our next letter comes in response to episode number 104, the 1970 Dodge Coronet RT Convertible 440 Magnum. And Michael Anastasio writes, Hey guy, according to the original Dodge brochures, RT stands for Rapid Transit, although road and track makes sense too. Well, Michael, I think uh, we're both kind of half right there. Uh, RT originally stood for road and track, but it also eventually stood for Rapid Transit System as part of the 1968 Plymouth advertising campaign. And in those ads, Plymouth called the 1968 Charger RT, Cornet RT, Dart GTS, Swinger 340, and Super B part of their Rapid Transit System. And the Rapid Transit System was an ad campaign and uh, program that included advertisements, uh, there was decals, kind of a fan club with wearables and other things to go along with your rapid transit cars. So although rapid transit does start with RT, some of the cars were not RTs like the Swinger 340. So in this case, it kind of means both, but originally on the car, the letters stood for road and track. Our next letter is in response to episode number 119, the 1970 Camaro Z28. And Peter L. writes, cool car. What's the black box thingy hanging out from the front on the right side? We had to go back and look at the footage of this one to see exactly what he was talking about. And sure enough, there's a little thingy on the right side hanging underneath the headlight. And that is visible at uh, one minute and 34 seconds in the video. And what that is, is the license plate frame mount. So that's where the license plate mounted on the front of the car. Typically we have a muscle car of the week plate there, but not in this particular shot. So good observation. You have a keen eye, Mr. Peter L. Our next letter is about the episode where we featured the 1969 Camaro SS 396 versus the 69 Mach 1 428 Super Cobra Jet. And we said, which of these two do you like better? Martin Bernard responded and he said, I prefer this comparison format to the normal videos. And that's a great point. We got a lot of response both ways, positive and negative, saying, you know, I really like it when you guys feature just one car. And other people say, hey, I thought that was pretty cool to be able to show the differences uh, between two iconic muscle cars. So we're going to do both going forward. We have some really cool comparisons coming up. We're trying to find cars that either are very different or very similar to share those differences in our comparison episodes. But we still have a lot of single car features coming up too. So thanks for the feedback there. One question we get very often is, are the cars we feature on Muscle Car of the Week for sale? And right now, our answer is no. Muscle Car of the Week is here to showcase the cars from the Brothers Collection. And although 
technically you might say everything is for sale. These are not sale ads. We're not putting prices on them. They're not out there so people can watch this and click a buy button to buy the car. We're merely sharing these wonderful cars from the collection. And eventually, the Brothers Collection Museum will be open uh, and there will be a, an opportunity to see these in a public space. But for now, all the car features are there for your entertainment and knowledge and appreciation of cool muscle cars.